Hi, I'm Chris and I make knives. Uh, in a previous video I showed you how I took my bar stock and I machined it into a blade blank. And in today's video what we're going to do is machine the bevels. This will be a lot of interest to a lot of knife makers out there. Hang tight, I'll show you how I do it. So I showed you in a previous video how I machined my blade blank. And from here you need to put on the bevels. There's a few things that you can do uh, to do that. One would be to freehand grind this. The problem with grinding freehand is that it's very hard to do. It's an acquired skill. I don't recommend this. If you're a maker who has a day job and you're making knives on the weekend, Saturday, fine, go for it. Learn to freehand. If you're in a position where you depend on knife sales to feed your kids and buy diapers, don't do it. Make a block jig. Um, grind with a jig. Uh, I do use a block jig. And I will show you that in a future video. Uh, another thing that you can do is machine the bevels. And I do both. And in today's video, we're showing how I machine the bevels. And I really like the results, but it doesn't really make it any less work. In fact, it probably makes it more work. The trade-off is it's more symmetrical. It's a more symmetrical blade. You cannot freehand grind as perfect as a CNC machine that's accurate to the ten thousandths of an inch. And that's what I pursue. I pursue precision, accuracy, perfection. <laughs> so, let's go down to the machine. I'll show you the enclosure where we left off. And uh, we'll machine the bevels. So where we left off at is we have just profiled out this um, part, chamfered this part, and now we're going to machine the bevels. We're going to start that off with a 188 end mill. We're going to come in here and we're going to climb cut it from tip to plunge. Now the problem with milling out the bevels this way is it takes a tremendous amount of time. It's just it's a few hours to do a few knives. Uh, but it does make them perfect. Another way that I've thought about doing this, which I actually haven't done it yet, is to turn the knife up on the edge, like in the vise, and then have this end mill come in to the plunge and go down the knife and actually use the whole length of the cutter. The way that I'm doing it, I'm just using a small uh, radius of the portion down here and it's pretty hard on the end mills. So one of the tools that I really want to buy in the future is a cutter master so I can resharpen my um, end mills. Or maybe a decal, SO, something like that. And after this side roughs in, I'll stop the machine and show you uh, what it looks like. So just so you guys can see how I'm machining this, I'm going to show you real quick. And I come in at the false edge at the tip and I work my way down the bevel and out the plunge. Stepping down from the cheek down to the cutting edge. And I went ahead and made this pocket to have room for the 375 to come in and machine the finishing bevels which it starts at the cutting edge and works its way up to the cheek. That's why I went ahead and machined out this pocket. So I'm not a professional YouTuber. Uh, I'm a knife maker using YouTube to promote myself. I'm not a YouTuber who makes knives. I am a knife maker trying to promote myself through YouTube. Uh, I need your help. Please hit that subscribe button. Or maybe it's over here. I don't really know. But please subscribe to my channel. It helps me tremendously. I'm trying to upload at least one video a week to help uh, other knife makers make better knives and primarily to promote myself uh, so people know who I am and uh, what I do and all about my knives. So please uh, subscribe to that if you can. So you can see what's happened is, is the 188 has roughed them in. Stepping down 40,000 at a time, they look just awful. And what's going to happen now is this uh, 375 is going to come in, starting at the cutting edge and work its way up, finishing the bevels up to the cheek. So here's a picture of the bevels straight in uh, off the mill. This is after we have done the finishing pass with the 375 and they look just fantastic. Um, a few nice things about machining the bevels with the Haas is the plunges are absolutely perfect. 
and it has a very distinctive cheek. It has a very nice cheek here. We're going to come in here and do some engraving. And this will be perfectly flat, so the knife will always perfectly center. Not to encourage you guys to pry with your knives. Remember, they're cutting tools, not pry, pry tools. Um, but it's very thick at the tip. It's about 40 thousandths. So it makes for a very, very strong tip. And uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to um, take them up, turn them over, and machine the backside. The time to do this half was two and a half hours almost. This is why most guys don't machine their bevels. It just takes too long. But the result is they're perfect. Smooth. It won't cut you. It's just outstanding. And here's the back side. It's flat. Before we put this back in the machine, we're going to go ahead and uh, deburr all this just to make sure there's no uh, anything that will not make, hold it flat. Welcome back to the workbench. This is a thousand grit water stone. Very quickly, I'm just going to make sure that it's flat. Just using a pencil, number two. This is a diamond. It's basically a 200 grit um, stone. This is how I keep my water stones flat. Let me flatten this real quick. And you just want to keep rubbing the stone on this until you get all of the graphite from the pencil off. And then you know it's flat. Ideally, you want to do this underwater. Okay, so I flattened this stone. It's now flat to within um, half a thou. I am now going to take my um, part from the machine and make sure there is nothing here holding me up at all. And very quickly, all we're doing is deburring the part. Sorry, they keep hitting the camera. It's in my way. And what I'm looking for is, is right in here. Sometimes there's a burr. And all around the perimeter, we want to make sure there's no... Any kind of burr sticking up, give us a false reading. If you have a bigger stone, you could do a figure eight. I have a lot of water stones. I used to use them for sharpening. Now I use um, a Wicked Edge cardboard sharpening wheels. I've tried many, many things over the years. Now I have a system. Uh, I'll show that in a future video, how I sharpen my knives. But I have a lot of water stones. And so, on the back side, what will happen is this pocket will be made first. That's to give the 375 room to do the bevels. And then it should come in and chamfer everything. And then uh, we'll go from there. Now we'll check it on the surface plate. So I just hit these on the, on the water stone. You can see um, that it took off some material. There shouldn't be much to, of anything. And then what we're doing is we're looking to make sure that this is flat. Um, we don't want the filler gauge to come down underneath the part anywhere that there's the metal. And so we're good. I'll even I'll check this with the thousands. Again, the part's flat. Sometimes when you machine these, um, if they're stressing the metal, if I didn't um, stress relieve these first. The metal may slightly bow as as you machine one side, and at that time you have to go back into the kiln, um, heat it to 1,200 degrees for hold it for two hours in order to stress relieve it. <clears throat> but in this case, our part is flat. We won't have to stress relieve it. These are just the five thirty second stop pins. I'm now going to use them to locate um, where the knife goes back into the jig. This will ensure that the knife is not clocked. If you, by having the stop pins in, it ensures that it's not clocked. So what we're going to do here is we're going to check it real quick. We're going to make sure that the part is in fact flat with the 4000 filter gauge. We are good to go. What we're going to do now is we're going to chamfer the pivot. 
you can see we have now chamfered a pivot. Now we'll take off these clamps and put the hold down screws through the pivot hole. Uh, blade is located properly as I tighten down this 10 by 24 screw through the pivot. I do have a washer on the end. I'm checking to make sure that this is flat. I'll let you guys in on a little secret. This is my top secret magnet technique to get out to the stop pins. It's like I'm kidding. I use a pair of channel locks. <laughs> Uh, sometimes it works, usually not. A lot. I told you it'd work. Sometimes it works, usually it doesn't. Um, when I machined the, the blind hole here for the stop pin, I made a mistake and made them a little bit too deep. Uh, so if I'm not careful, they'll flush off at the top of my part and have a real hard time getting back out. When you make your jig, don't you make that mistake and you'll be good to go. And if you, you know, not even Life maker makes knives like this. Some guys do hidden stop pins. Well, I think two stop pins in a knife is unnecessary. So what's just happened is I just milled out my pockets. These pockets is to give initial room for the bevels. We do a quick tool check break. And now we're gonna spot the holes for the thumb stud. So what the machine is doing now, it's chamfering um, the back side of the knife. I'm just using a drill mill, it's a chamfer mill to do that. This tool can be used for both uh, spotting and also for the chamfering of holes. It saves you place in the carousel. You just use one tool for both. Uh, we are now chamfering the part. So right now it's coming in and it's, it's putting this chamfer around the, uh, around the blade. We're now drilling the holes for the thumb stud. This is a 093 thousandths uh, drill bit. And if you don't know that 093 is a pass through for a two by 56. So what the machine just did, it just, it just milled this pocket right here. Um, this pocket is where the thumb stud sets into. That way as you apply lateral forces, the, it's taken up by the blade and the thumb stud and not so much on a tiny little 2x56 screw. So here's my blade blank. This has been machined. Uh, the bevels are now put on here. You can see they're on both sides of the knife. And now the next process is I'm going to work on removing these step overs. And to do that I'm going to use a tool uh, called the Fordham. This is a jewelry making tool and I use this tool all the time to make my knives. We also have more processes. I need to surface grind this down to the final thickness cut this excess metal free. I also will come in here and engrave my name and then also the blade steel type and um, USA, United States of America because I, I love this country. We're coming up on 15 minutes. I'm going to end this video here. Um, thank you so very much for spending your time with me and watching all the way through. Again, my name is Christopher Gillen and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.